Hello everyone and welcome to episode 1 of what I'm thinking is going to be a 7 part series on how to build a space battleship in Blender. Uh, episode 1 is going to cover mostly the modeling process, uh, going to go through some modifiers and that sort of thing, and then episode 2 we're going to go into adding some hole plating and some extra detail, also known as greebles. And then after that, we're going to add a little bit more extra detail, satellites, all sorts of sensor poles and that sort of thing. Episode four, we're going to be building weapons to go on the ship. We're going to be building five different kinds of weapons, and I'm going to teach you all how to rig them and how to actually make them fire. Um, and then episode six after or episode five uh, is going to be rigging the rest of the ship, uh, adding controllers and that sort of thing. And I'm going to be going over all of that in very specific detail that way when you actually move your ship in an effort to animate it it won't just completely fall apart very quickly and then after that we're going to texture the ship uh, we're going to add a bunch of different materials all of it's going to be procedural uh, or procedural or how do you ever you say it um, we're going to use a lot of textures noise textures brick textures and all of it's going to be within blender so don't worry about finding any image textures online or anything like that and then the last episode of this series is going to be on lighting the world, so a little bit of compositing, a little bit of actual lights itself, adding sun lamps and that sort of thing. We're going to go into a uh, yeah, compositing, rendering, setting up your camera, setting up a simple shot, and yeah, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. Uh, what we're first going to do is we're going to delete these here, we're going to delete the camera and the point light. And we're going to take our cube here, front view, tab, control R to go uh, and cut it, get a loop cut. And then we're going to go and delete these vertices here. That way only half of it still exists. And we're going to go in here and add a mirror modifier about the X axis. And we're going to go back into solid view here. And now we have our basis for the mesh. So switch into uh, face select. And then what you're going to want to do is go into left view going to extrude this right here and then you're going to extrude this right here and this is just going to be setting up a very simple mesh uh, in the very beginning basically just blocking it out um, we're going to keep it all as one object for the beginning and then we're going to move from there so we have this very very simple shape here uh, and then you're going to want to go into a uh, key say in solid view and then extrude backwards a little bit and then go back to the front, extrude a little bit more here. And then this is where the shape is going to get a little bit more interesting. What you're going to want to do is grab all of these faces on the bottom here. And if you want to select a row like this, you click on the first and then control click on the last. And if you guys want it in the future, I can add uh, my key press. That way it's just a little bit more clear what's going on. So we're going to extrude this downward a little bit, and then we're going to grab this right here. We're going to go back into left view, and then G, and then Y to constrain to the Y axis. Move it forward a little bit. And we're going to go here, and then going to hit Alt, and then E, and hit extrude faces along normals. And this will push it out in this very interesting shape right here, um, kind of creating like a hammer looking shape on the front which I'm a big fan of and then we're going to want to grab this extrude right click to lock it into place and then we're going to hit G and then Y to constrain it to the Y axis again and then we're going to come here grab this edge right here G Y to constrain it to the Y axis and then we're going to add a loop cut here drag it down a little bit and then going to go here click on that face, select over to this face, grab this face, select over to this face, and once again hit Alt E, extrude faces along normals, and we're going to get this here. So you're going to get this shape here, which looks a little bit strange, but it'll, it'll start looking very cool soon. So you're going to grab it on the Y axis, pull it across, and then a little trick here to make these faces look a little bit better is hit scale, S for scale, Z, and then zero. That way it flattens about the, ac the Z axis. Uh, and then you're going to leave this here because I kind of like that shape. But for these, you definitely want to go S, Z, zero again to flatten it about the Z axis. 
you're going to grab this face here, pull it forward a little bit, and then add another loop cut. You're going to grab this face, pull it forward, and then that's a, and then one more loop cut right here, and then grab this, and then pull it, f f pull it forward about the y-axis as well. Grab this loop right, or this edge right here, and pull it backwards. Then you're going to add another loop cut right like this just to kind of round it out a little bit. Pull that back and then do the same here. So now we have this very interesting looking shape and we can move on to other aspects of the ship and we're just going to leave this as the base for the front for now. So we get to the back of the ship, E to extrude, and then we're going to grab these faces here and then don't grab the top, um, just these parts right here. You're going to hit Alt E again, extrude along normals. And then, oh, also make sure that you have clipping selected in your mirror modifier. And let me just go through here and make sure. So yeah, because I didn't add the mirror modifier in the beginning, we're going to get a lot of extra faces in the middle of the geometry is to go into front view and select these faces here and then just delete them and that will solve the issue of clipping so now that we're back at the end of the ship again we're going to come here and hit I and then B so that way the inset will carry on over to the other side of the mirror modifier as well and you're going to hit E and extrude it inwards, and then you're going to hit S, Y, and 0 to flatten it about the Y axis. So, now we have this shape here, and I'm going to just expand this backwards a little bit, because it looks a bit small. Uh, so we're going to pull that backwards like that, and then actually we can push this forward again. Now we have a better shape. I think I'm going to pull this downwards a little bit as well and actually undo that and then pull this downwards like that and then another thing to make a more interesting shape is that we can pull this on the inside and on the outside and we can make this shape right here so now we have kind of a engine pocket at the back that we can put all sorts of thrusters and stuff in afterwards so now we have this very simple shape right here and what I might actually do is scale about the x-axis a little bit to widen it because it does look a bit narrow in the middle and then I'm going to go back into edit mode here I'm going to grab let me think I'm going to grab these faces right here I to inset and then G and X no never mind not that you're going to come here, grab all of these, in I for inset, and then pull them outwards about the x-axis. That way we have kind of this shape right here. And then I'm going to pull a little bit closer together. And there we go. Scale it down about the z-axis a little bit. Just to give it a little bit more of a slope on the top and bottom parts of it. And a little bit more maybe and there we go now we have that shape right there and then one more time we're going to grab these faces here and extrude them outwards a little bit and then we're going to grab them again and then scale about the Z again that way we get this shape right here and what we're going to do here in this area is we're going to add a few more engines that way it's not just one engine pocket it looks like there's a little bit more action going on with the actual movement of the ship itself. And then after that, we are going to come onto the top of the ship right here. You can go to top view. We're going to grab these faces right here. And then we're going to hit I to inset. And then E to pull it up a little bit. And this is going to be like the superstructure or the command area of the ship. And then we're going to hit I inset again and then E to extrude it upwards, and then I again, E again, I again, E again. 
and there we go we have this very basic shape right here and now because these lines here are getting a bit close to the center or close to clipping into one another we're just going to grab these right here and set again pull it up again and set again pull it up again and then as the last step we're going to inset one more time grab these two extrude and then pull this up like this that way we have this kind of command structure set up right here and we're going to grab this face right here and we're going to extrude it outwards we're going to grab the bottom edge on it we're going to pull it up and then we're going to grab this and pull it this way that we have this interesting shape and uh, uh, the key to making most science fiction things is in my opinion at least making it look interesting now we're going to grab these and pull them up a little bit and we're going to grab this and pull it backwards now we have kind of a out overlooking shape to this now so we're going to grab these four faces right here and we're going to pull them forward we're also going to pull these forward these two areas right here are going to be like weapons platforms for the rest of the ship and then we're going to grab these actually we're going to grab all of these faces here like this and then we're also going to go to the back and grab the same group of faces in the back and then we're going to scale them about the x-axis that way it adds a little bit more definition to the shape itself that way it looks a little bit less blocky making it look a lot more interesting and now we don't have any mesh clipping which is very good and then in the back here we're going to grab these four here and then pull them actually no just these two faces and we're going to pull them backwards like this that way we don't mess up this vertice right here uh, and right here we're going to add another weapons platform and now we have a very simple basic look for the entire mesh of the ship uh, and then we're going to go into edit mode again you're going to go grab all of these faces up here and then we're going to hit E we're going to grab these faces right here and we're going to pull them up a little bit actually just grab them all pull them up a little bit I'm going to grab these edges right here and pull them back about the Y axis and then we're going to grab these edges right here, pull them out about the g-axis just to shape it up a little bit more. And then right here, we're going to inset and make sure it still has the uh, uh, make sure you still have the ability to inset over the mirror modifier. So whenever you have a full uh, face inset so it's not the individual faces it's the entire group itself make sure you hit B that way it'll work over the modifier itself and then you're going to E and extrude it downwards just a little bit now I'm going to take a look looks pretty cool so far I like the overall shape of it uh, we're going to come in here we're going to grab this face right here and pull it out a tiny bit well not a tiny bit a little bit that way it doesn't just look like there's a flat line right here it's a bit whale-ish looking which I'm a big fan of then we're going to grab this right here and this is going to be like our hangar bay area of the ship I to inset and then before we do anything else we're going to add another loop cut right here we're going to grab these two faces we're going to scale it down a little bit we're going to grab the middle one right here the middle face and we're going to scale it outwards about the y-axis to give it almost a hexagonal shape that way it has a little bit more definition than just a square in the side of the ship and then we're going to hit E to extrude it inwards a tiny bit and we're going to hit control R to add a loop cut and we're going to grab this face loop right here 
and we're also going to extrude that inwards a little bit because we're going to add more detail to that afterwards. So now we have this shape. We're going to grab all the way back to there. And we're also going to come up here and grab these as well. And we're going to grab and move them in a little bit about the x-axis to give the ship a little bit more definition because one of the biggest mistakes that at least I was making early in my uh, hard surface modeling career was that I was making all of my objects way too blocky and then to add a little bit more definition to it we're going to go here and grab all of these make sure that we have everything selected and then we're going to grab this and pull it about the x-axis as well just to provide a little bit more definition so now it's a little bit more rounded in the middle and it's looking pretty good so far I have to say so we're going to come around here we're going to grab all of these all of these couple of these and don't forget, you can hit control click to select groups, not groups. Um, it's called picking the shortest path, but usually it's used to select objects in a row like these edge loops are. And then that's actually okay right there like that. Grab these edge loops as well and grab these edge loops here. And then finally grab these edge loops. So now we have kind of this main section here selected. You can grab this as well. And then what we're going to do, actually grab these. So now that we have all of these selected, we're going to hit control B to bevel them all to give the, uh, a little bit less harsh edges. And so you're going to hit Control B, make sure you're zoomed in so you can actually see what's going on. And then you're going to bevel it just a little bit. If you scroll back a little bit and take a look at it, you'll see that it adds a good bit more definition to almost everything. So we have this very simple base mesh for right now. So we're going to name this base and then we're going to add start to add more detail so we're going to hide this and actually before we do that we're going to move it to a collection Oops. by hitting M and then hit new collection and then hit or I'm going to call this ship now that ship is in a collection and we can just go here and hide it next thing we're going to do we're going to model the engines so we're going to come here and we're going to grab a cylinder go into edit mode and one thing I like to do is when I'm adding actual parts of a ship or just parts of a model in general is I like to have the uh, the origin point at the very bottom of the mesh that way if I scale it about the z-axis it just gets taller it won't necessarily extend in any strange ways and I also attach them to faces, so if I do scale it, it won't uh, intersect with other meshes. So I'll show you how to do that. You can just come here, go into left view, and in case you guys are wondering, I'm not using a numpad. I have my tilde here, which is the button under the escape button, and you can go into all of the viewports just by hitting this. And then we're going to hit G, and then Z, and then 1. Make sure that you do this in edit mode, or else it'll just move the origin point as well as the object. But if you move everything in edit mode, it will move them without moving the origin point, therefore setting the origin point to the very bottom of the mesh. So, next thing we're going to do is hit Control r for a loop cut here. That way we cut it in the middle. Then we're going to scale this about the... or just scale it. Uh, and just to make it a little bit shorter now we have this kind of engine looking shape here and then we're going to come here and then grab these loops right here by hitting alt and then clicking like this 
and that will select that edge loop there. And then you can come here, and then you can bevel it a little bit for a little bit of extra detail. And you can come down here and also bevel, actually no, don't bevel that. So you're going to come here, inset this a little bit, go into your left view, hit Alt-Z to go into X-ray view, pull it down a little bit, that way it gets as close as possible to this edge loop right here, scale it outwards a little bit, that way it at least sort of matches, and then extrude it downwards like this, try to get it as close as you can to that, and then extrude it downwards again, and scale it like this. Now we have this kind of hollowed out shape for an engine right here. Now, one of the th easiest way to add detail is to come here, add two edge loops, hit Control B to bevel, and then hit Alt E. That once you or yeah, you have these edges, these faces here. So you can go into face view. You can hit Alt E, extrude faces along normals, and you can just pull them inwards like this to add a couple, a little bit of extra detail. And then we're going to come here, right click, Shade Smooth. You're going to head over to your Object Data Properties over here because this does not look like anything. It looks like a, I don't even know what it looks like. It just doesn't look good. So you're going to hit Auto Smooth right here and that will give it a more smoothed out look. So we're going to hit Tab again, 3 to go into Face Selection. And I'm going to hit I to inset these, and then hit I again. That way you're insetting individual faces rather than all the faces at the same time. And I'm going to get it here. Alt E, extrude faces along normals. I'm going to pull them down a tiny bit. Now we have that kind of, I don't know what you'd call it, but the look that um, like rocket ships would have in their engines. And you can come here and do the same thing here. And Alt E, extrude along normals. There we go. Just a tiny bit to add a little bit of depth. Then you can come here, grab these, I to inset them as well, and then do the same kind of thing. But instead of going inwards, you can go outwards. So this is like this, but it kind of looks a little bit boring. Everything is just very squared off. So one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and I'm going to click on this up here. And this will determine where, where an object is scaled about. So if I were to scale all of these right now, they would all scale as if they were one singular collection, which they are. So that's not the effect that I want to go for right now. So I'm going to switch to this, the transform pivot point. I'm going to go to individual origins. So now when I scale all of these, it'll scale each individual face by itself. So scale this like that just a little bit. And now that looks a lot better. And if you want to add even more, as always, add a little bevel. Round everything off. That's very interesting looking, I think. I'm going to come here, actually. Add two loop cuts, two loop cuts, grab these, and extrude them inwards again. Now we have this shape here, so I'm going to come here, click, click. So you're going to come here and start selecting these in a loop like this, all the way around every other one. And you're going to hit Alt-E to extrude them along the normals, and then go like this. And then we have this right here, which adds a little bit more detail as well. And you're going to come here, inset this. Actually, you know what? I'm going to come here. I don't like how skinny this looks on the bottom. So what we can do by that is you can hit O. That'll uh, turn on proportional editing, so whenever you make an edit to something, there will be, in this circle right here, it'll change faces <coughs> in that circle, or it'll change uh, vertices in that 
area when you're in edit mode, but you can also do it in object mode as well. So, and now another quick trick is I'm going to grab all of these faces down here. And I want to flatten them out. And I'll teach you another trick about the transform pivot point. So, if I were to scale all of these about the z-axis to flatten them out about the z-axis, it would pull down the central face a little bit, that way it would be underneath the origin point, which is something that we don't want to have happen. So what I'm going to do is select this, so that way this is the active element. I'm going to come up to the transform pivot point, and I'm going to hit active element. So when I scale this, SZ is zero, or I can turn off proportional editing, SZ is zero, it pulls all of those edges up so that way it's flat about this axis right here and there's nothing else pulling on it. And I think I'm going to come up here, I'm going to inset all of these and then we can extrude it upwards and then move back to median point and scale this like that. So now we have this object right here, which will be a engine. So you can hit RX and then 90 to rotate it about the, the X axis, 90 degrees. That way we can stick it on the end of the ship. Then we're going to come here. And we're going to actually move this over here about the Y axis. R, Z is constrained to the Z axis, and then 180. I'm going to pull it downwards, I'm going to pull it inwards, and then here's another trick. I'm going to come up here to Snap To, click Face, and whenever I move this, it'll snap to the nearest face. So I'm going to hit G, Y. Oops, actually I have to hit it. G, Y. And now, the bottom of this will stick to that face. We're going to copy this, move it about the x-axis, and scale it downwards. And luckily, because it's already uh, snapped to that face and also the origin point is at the very bottom, we won't have to worry about it moving away from the mesh. I'm going to pull it up a little bit, I'm going to pull it out a little bit, that way there's a little bit of room here. I'm going to copy it again, I'm going to come here, I'm going to come here, and I'm going to delete that negative, and that'll put it directly on the other side. And you're going to grab both of these, copy them, pull them downwards. It's a little bit interesting right there. Copy that, pull it downwards, scale it. Now we have this pretty sizable engine area here. Now, we're going to come to this area right here on the front of this. I'm going to come here, select all of these faces, or actually select these faces, select these faces, and hit F to fill them in so that way they're only individual faces. I'm going to hit I to inset them individually, only a little bit. I'm going to hit right click, subdivide, and then we're going to come here. I'm going to grab all of these vertices here that aren't the four corners. And this is a little bit of destructive mesh editing, but um, there won't be much added to the outside of this, so it is okay. I'm going to hit function F3. I'm going to dissolve these vertices. And I'm going to come back here, join those together with J. So to do that you click on the two vertices and you hit J. Like that. Whoops. Come here, join these together, join these together. To join meetings, please link a calendar in your Alexa app. I've sent a link to your phone with instructions. And for that, we're going to hit F, and we're going to come here, and then hit J. I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup here, just to make sure that there's nothing messed up. I'm going to hit A to select all, 
mesh we're going to go to cleanup and then merge by distance and that clears out some of the extra stuff that might screw up the mesh later i'm going to hit tab again now we have these right here and then i'm going to right click subdivide right click subdivide and subdivide one more time we're going to go to individual origins scale them downward scale them upwards a little bit that way they're very square looking so for this next part you need to have a few add-ons that are built into blender first one you're going to need is the loop tools add-on and you can just go edit preferences and then it'll be right here and then around here go here loop mesh loop tools so just click on this click on that and then for following episodes we're going to need the extra mesh or the extra objects so we're going to need this one right here for later but for now uh, in edit mode hit N come over to edit and then loop tools will be right here and then we're going to hit this to turn them both into circles and then we're going to scale them about the x-axis that way they're a little bit more circular looking it's not going to be quite perfect and unless you have a perfect square it won't be a perfect circle and they're going to extrude them inwards just a little bit they're going to hit F to fill them both in that way they're not that large grid like that I'm going to hit I to inset them a little bit and then E to pull them out and then E again and then scale it E again scale it E again and scale it now we have this kind of dome looking shape we're going to shade it smooth come over here <laughs> to this right here auto smooth and to fix some of these issues I'm going to click on this these edge loops right here and bevel them and then we're also going to do that with these two faces right here just to make sure that they're actually flat just a little bit though there we go now I'm going to come here I'm going to hit face select grab these two tips of the domes wait oops here's the problem I'm going to come to the go back into object mode hit control a and then apply the scale and that way it won't mess up any of the um, mesh deforming stuff that we're doing so we're going to hit I and then E to pull it out a little bit and then scale it down and bevel it and then we're going to come here to these edge loops right here and we're also going to bevel them like that <coughs> and that'll be like a power generator type thing so now we have this shape here and this is all one singular object well aside from all these engine parts back here so we're going to grab all of these engines we're going to hit M new collection engines that way we can just keep them all together and then we're going to come here to the back of this I'm going to hit 3 to go into face select grab these right here inset hit it twice that way you go into all selected and you'll inset all of it instead of just individual faces and pull it forward just a little bit I'm going to tab to go back I'm going to copy this with shift D G to move it and then Y to constrain it to the Y axis we're going to scale it down that way it fits GX GZ to move it up there we go so it seems a little bit small so we're going to get a better angle to look at this from and scale it up like that there we go and we're going to hit shift E and Z to move it downwards and I'm going to scale this one down a little bit that way they both fit in there together and then we're going to take this and we're going to duplicate it and then we're going to move this to the opposite side 
I'm going to hit that negative. That way it's actually over there. And then we're going to duplicate this as well. And get rid of that negative. Now, they're on both sides of the ship. I'm going to save this file real quick. And here's a little preview of stuff that I've been working on. So, now we have this shape here. I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode, add a loop cut right here. And then we're going to select all of these faces. I to inset. Make sure there's no clipping. And then E to ex oops, make sure that you have this turned off. And since it's already extruded, G Y to pull up backwards. We're going to do the same thing here. I to inset, E to pull it backwards, and there you go. Now we have that shape right there as well, which we're going to turn. We're going to turn this area into like a very well lit, like power generator type area. We're going to come here. We're going to grab these faces like this. Not this face. Actually, yes, this face. And we're going to pull it down just a little bit to give it a little bit of a bulbous shape on the bottom. Okay, now we have this. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to hide the engines, hide the base. And then we're gonna come here, we're going to add a UV sphere. And this will be for some side mounted weapons platforms. We're going to hit go here, Alt Z, one to go into vertex select and then delete all of these vertices so that way we have this like bowl shape we're going to hit alt and then click to get this loop selected and we're going to hit f i'm going to switch into this to face select hit i and then extrude it downwards a tiny bit to give it this sort of shape i'm going to click on it again right click shade smooth Come over here to the object data properties and click auto smooth. So now we have this right here. We're going to we're going to come to the left. We're going to hit Alt Z to go into mirror um, or uh, X-ray view. We're going to delete all of these faces. Then we're going to also delete this. Actually, no, we're not going to delete this face. We should come here, join that together. And then we can come here, and delete that face. Always make sure that you save very often as well. Just a quick pro tip. Mirror modifier. Instead of about the X axis, we're going to hit Y axis. We're going to go back into this view. We're going to select everything so go alt z select everything except for the first loop so come on down here grab all of these there we go we're going to pull it this oh make sure you have clipping on pull it this way to make it look like a pill shape almost and there we go and then we're done with the mirror modifier so we can apply that because we're going to be adding some more stuff to it as we go along and we can join these together oops join these two vertices together and then join these two vertices together so that way we have four distinct sections here and then we can come here and since the origin point is already in the center scale it downwards a little bit to make it a little bit deeper almost like a bathtub so we're going to pull this outwards a little bit unhide the base pull this up pull it across Scale it way, not way down, a good bit down. Move it here. 
move it backwards so it's about right there move it downwards and there we go and then we're going to duplicate this We're going to move it this way, about the y-axis. And we're going to do that one more time. So that way there's three distinct platforms here. Now this causes an issue here, where it kind of overlaps with this. So we're going to go tab, edit mode here. Grab these faces here and pull them inwards, just like that. So now we have that those shapes there. So what I do here is I'm going to duplicate all of them, join that new duplicated object together, come here, and then click on this. And another add-on you're actually going to need is the bool tool. You don't need it, but it just makes things a little bit quicker in my opinion. And you're going to hit difference. And now that will make cuts out of this that are the exact same shape as all of these platforms here. I'm going to come here, click on this, join them all together. Actually, not yet. We're going to leave that Boolean cut, but we're actually going to link the object data of all of these together. That because we're going to do be doing a little bit more editing to them later in the extra details and hull plating phase. So we have all of this right here. We're going to move these into the base collection or the ship collection with the base. I'm going to come here. Uh, we're going to hide the ship collection. I'm going to add a cylinder. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to tab A, G, Z, 1. And that moves it up 1 meter because all of the objects are 2 by 2 meters to start out with. Now we have this shape here. I'm going to grab this, G, Z, negative 1. So now it's an only 1 meter tall object. We're going to inset a little bit. These are going to be a few more weapons platforms on a different part of the ship. Extrude it downwards. Add some loop cuts. Grab them like this. With the Alt trick to grab the sides like that. I'm going to bevel them. Alt E, extrude faces along normals. There. Right click, shade smooth. And then, as always, auto smooth. And there we have this shape now. A very simple shape. I'm going to come here, inset, and then pull it up a little bit just to add some more definition. And then go to, to go into edge select, grab these, grab these, and bevel them. Grab these, also grab these and this, and bevel just a little bit. Grab these, and bevel. There we go. So now we're going to move this out of the way. And unhide the base or the ship collection. I'm going to move this backwards because these this is going to go on top of this section right here. Scale it down. Scale it up actually. Hit S Shift Z. That way it won't. It'll only scale it that way. And then pull it up. That way it's just barely outside of it. And then scale it downwards. And then S Shift Z. Just get it to a point where it's kind of embedded inside the side, right? Like this. There we go. I'm going to duplicate this. So that way there will be three of them on top of this object right here. Those look pretty evenly spaced. And we're going to do the same thing we did before. Duplicate them. Join that duplication together. Right here. Bool tool. Difference. Now there's all those cuts. That way they will join together nicely. 
and then we're going to come here control L object data so that way if we ever make a change to one like here oops all three of them link object data so I click on this I make a change here just to show an example there all of the changes same with the same thing I did with these three right here so yeah um, I'm going to grab these and the easiest thing to do here is to parent to this object right here. I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate. And then since they're all parented to this active element here, go here and then hit that negative. Get rid of that negative. And also whenever you use the bool tool on an object, it will clear out its modifier stack. We are going to have to come in and re-add that mirror modifier. We're going to have to cut the ship in half again. <laughs> There we go. Front view, tab, Alt Z. Get rid of all of these faces. Delete faces. Modifiers. Mirror. And there we go. So, yeah, that's going to be it for episode one. We have our very simple mesh here with a very interesting shape to it and then next episode we're going to come in and we're going to add a bunch of hull plates greebles just to make it look like it has a lot more polygons than it actually does um, without putting a ton of unnecessary time into specifically modeling things but yeah thank you all i hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and there will be more to come